You know, one of the more um, difficult aspects, friends, of being a Christian today is seeing, I would say, the loss of faith in society. I mean, the, very much the lack of engagement of friends, of family, neighbours that we know quite well. Uh, kind of a, a devil-may-care kind of attitude to the faith and towards those who do have faith. And, you know, as a priest, friends, I come across two experiences almost on a weekly basis um, of people's lives that always saddens my heart, which I hear again and again. The first is those who are in the workplace, say. Uh, there's a fear of being too vocal about the faith, or a number of people often recount to me how they find when they're in the presence of some of their colleagues, they would mock, essentially, or make fun of the faith in their presence. And second is mothers who cry to me so often uh, because they're saddened over the fact that their children or their grandchildren, they just don't engage with the faith at all. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't have an active participation in the worship of the Lord, particularly at Mass, say on Sundays, even just once a month, whatever it may be. And folks, I, I do think our society is suffering as a result of this, the erosion of the conscious Christian the conscious Catholic. Um, I mean, the values that society has upheld for thousands of years, as we can see, is completely un undermined at the moment. And at the heart of all this is just almost a diminishing of human dignity, our worth as children of God. Um, I mean, the fact that marriage, basic human biology, truth, reason, beauty, goodness, all of those things, folks, are being deconstructed before our very eyes in the times we live in. I mean, even our churches, you see that they're becoming quickly coveted um, by a, almost a quasi-religious humanism. That on the outside, it's very much all about social justice, environmental matters only. Then from the ambo, it's about equality. It's about uh, diversity, which is replacing salvation the supernatural truth of our faith and the defense, of course, of God's laws, moral laws. And all of this, folks, can be quite a tough trial for those who deem themselves faithful to the Lord in this world. Um, it can cause so many a genuine pain in their heart. And I think as a result, folks, so many people, they disengage. There's a temptation just to walk away, just forget about it, I'll do it my own way. Which is sad, but it's quite a strong reality. And I believe everybody, Our Lady, the Blessed Mother, she can offer us a sense of direction and some much needed hope uh, in order to stick with the Lord and his church. And her stamina, in particular, is an important model we should try and take on board. I mean, folks, we're entering Holy Week now, starting from this evening onwards. A few days where we're the faithful of the Lord's church, we just come together and we re-enter I want a better expression, the events of the Lord's death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. Uh, you know, I mean, folks, there are a few days that can offer us a simple replenishment of our souls, hearts, and minds, which is much needed in the times we live in. A few days where the church is pretty much forced to speak and examine the supernatural truth and reality of the resurrection of Christ. Thank God for it. That's an event, as we all know, completely changed the world as we know and offers us a tremendous hope and reason to believe. That's a reality everybody, Our Lady herself, experienced. Imagine the joy she experienced upon meeting her resurrected son. And of course, before that, she stood at the foot of the cross. She had to stand at the foot of the cross, a place of agony, a place of torment, a place of confusion. And yet she stayed there. She didn't run away. She stuck with Christ, even when all seemed hopeless or lost. She held firm, folks, to the belief that God was in charge, knowing in her heart God had a plan. That's why, you know, there is a tremendous amount of confusion and worry dominating so many people's hearts at present. And, you know, that's why the faith that you and I, folks, hold dear, it can be tested quite readily. Um, we can have questions. That's why Our Lady, she's always a model for us to follow a faith in the Lord. Her faith and her hope in God that he was in charge no matter how tough or difficult or how confusing it got. That's what enabled her to hold firm at the foot of the cross and to not give up. 
I think, folks, we get a tremendously beautiful definition of faith in what St. Paul wrote into the letter of Hebrews, where he said, faith, he says, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Isn't that some line? The assurance of things we hope for. That's an amazing definition of faith. I've yet to hear one better than that. Folks, I would suggest to all of us and those of us online, for your prayer for Holy Week this year, think about that, that definition of faith. With the prevailing and growing persecution of the Christian faith in society and very much the lackluster response as a church, in this country anyway, that your prayer to the Lord is to increase your faith, your hope, that that hope you have in God is assured for what Christ has done on the cross and from his rising from the dead and to not run away and be like John welcome the blessed mother into your home into your heart and be the disciples our country needs Our Lady pray for us